As the demand for milk and milk products continues to grow and dairy operations become more concentrated, producers face a daily problem, the disposing of their herd's manure in a safe, cost-effective manner. Increasing rules and regulations for confined animal feeding operations has only added to the difficulty of managing dairy waste products. With Texas being a no-discharge state, producers are searching for new ways to effectively meet mandated requirements while creating economic opportunity and operational success. When we started here, we had all grazing. When you graze, you have to catch a lot of water, you have a lot of ponds to catch everything. To meet these demands while helping dairy farmers, the Texas State Soil and Water Conservation Board and Environmental Protection Agency has joined with Texas A&M University Commerce to demonstrate in-vessel composting as an alternative waste management system. Composting has been around uh, since the beginning of time. It's, um, it's, it's, it's the natural process of, of de decomposing organic material. However, with the volumes of organic material that are now being produced uh, that are associated with confined animal feeding operations or municipal sewer treatment plants and so forth, we need to have uh, faster ways to decompose this material and stabilize it uh, to where it's in, in an in environmentally suitable form. And in order to do that, then, then we have to assist the natural processes in order to get the composting process started quickly. As our population increases, we're, we're generating a lot more waste products in our environment. We're needing to produce more food. Uh, a lot of the food production systems then are going to generate more waste. And in order to, to um, uh, be able to feed the masses and conserve our environment and protect the sustainability of agricultural enterprises, uh, that's the primary reason that, that we're involved in this. At the Belinga Dairy in Como, Texas, a unique solution to these concerns has shown how producers may benefit economically while at the same time meet increased governmental obligations. The goal of this project is to collect all of the solid waste from this 400 cow freestall facility and compost it using in-vessel composting techniques where we can isolate it from the environment very, very quickly and convert that into a value-added, high-quality compost material that would be marketable to both the greenhouse and landscaping horticultural industries outside of this host watershed. Dr. Don Cawthon explains the process. The, uh, of course, the, the animals in this freestall facility will stay during their lactation period um, each year, primarily in this confinement facility, where they stand and, uh, and, and eat. Uh, they deposit most of their manure behind them. Then five to six times a day, uh, the manure is hydraulically flushed out of this freestall facility. It's collected uh, in, a, in a holding pit and then pumped up to a solids separator where the liquids are separated from the solids. The liquids then go out to a uh, two-stage lagoon system. The solids are separated and placed on a, on a concrete slab where we allow them to stand for a couple of days to drain. When the solids come out of the solid separator, they're approximately 80% moisture, and we need to reduce that moisture content down to, to at least 65%. From there, then, the animal waste is placed inside the composter where it will have approximately a three-day retention time. During that composting, three-day composting period, temperatures will approach 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which is adequate to, adequate to get a pathogen kill as well as to uh, kill weed seeds. At that point in time, it's unloaded. The project has demonstrated other benefits as well. Manpower and hours were reduced on waste management. The final product could also be used year-round as stall bedding. Composting kills mastitis-causing pathogens, a health concern for all dairy farmers, during the process. Finally, odors normally associated with the manure were removed within the first 24-hour period of composting. It saves a lot of money, especially because the fertilizer prices are real high. Now we have the lagoon so we can catch everything and we have more wastewater to spray on our pastures. We don't have to buy fertilizer anymore. So that's a benefit for us. We don't have to drive the cows into the big mud in the winters because we have the barn, it's all on concrete. 
in the summer we don't have that the cows are laying under the trees not eating because the free still born we can cool them down they will eat and with the compost because we have the free still born we had more waste and with the compost we can get rid of some of the waste we don't use for bedding so our surplus is going in the composter and we sell it make some money of that this marketable byproduct not only provides additional income for the dairy producer, but as the compost is taken away from the area, it removes a significant amount of nutrients that could threaten a watershed that houses a large number of confined animal feeding operations. In fact, at the Valenga dairy, waste removal resulted in savings to the watershed of 8,000 pounds of nitrogen and 3,000 pounds of phosphorus and potassium. There's a tremendous amount of Canadian sphagnum peat moss that's transported into Texas every year to support not only uh, the, the greenhouse industry, where they utilize a lot of peat moss in soilless plant growing medium, uh, but also a lot of peat moss is used in exterior landscaping operations as a soil amendment. Now, this composted uh, dairy cattle solid waste using the in-vessel techniques is a very high quality product that we have found uh, uh, in our research over the last five or six years that works very effectively as a unilateral peat moss substitute. So our goal here in this specific project is to take uh, a waste product from a dairy and convert it into a value-added high quality product that could be marketed outside the watershed either potentially in bulk form to a large wholesale nursery or could be bagged in homeowner sized bags and, and moved through retail garden centers or mass market outlets. The potential economic impact of, 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 of this particular project has shown that on a 400 cow free stall dairy which uh, produces somewhere between six and seven cubic yards of uh, separated solid waste daily can generate a net return to the dairyman of approximately $14,000 per year. At the same time, then, it's helping the dairyman uh, improve his sustainability by uh, moving a waste product not only off of the particular dairy farm, but also out of the potentially impacted watershed. Good waste management practices are essential if the dairy industry in Texas is to continue to grow and thrive under today's environmental challenges. The, the motivation for doing this type of work uh, is really twofold. One is, um, uh, is deeply ingrained in environmental protection issues and specifically in this case we're dealing with the quality of both underground and surface water quality. The, uh, uh, other motivation uh, for doing this type of work is to help improve the sustainability of not only the dairy industry or other confined animal feeding operations, but also the horticultural industry to produce a, a product that uh, works well as a unilateral substitute for peat moss. For more information on in-vessel composting or dairy waste management, please contact your local soil and water conservation district or the Texas State Soil and Water Conservation Board at 1-800-792-3485. The demonstration at the Valenga Dairy was a voluntary project funded through the EPA under Section 319H of the Clean Water Act. The Texas State Soil and Water Conservation Board, which is the lead agency for the state's agricultural and silvicultural non-point source management program, administered funds for the project. Funding is provided to the State Board to implement activities that demonstrate ways to control and prevent non-point source pollution associated with agricultural and silvicultural runoff.